Joseph show you know who it is it's your host Von Joseph you guys it's November it's November we've been away for a while we are back on the attack we have to be because unless you've been living under a rock you know that the political elections in the United States have just come to a conclusion and you know what happened Donald Trump beat the dynasty candidate in Hillary Rodham Clinton well, what do you know about that? Nobody saw that coming. I know. I didn't see it coming. Did you see it coming? I know you didn't see it coming. No one saw that stuff coming. Wow. So we got a special guest for you guys today here to discuss all kinds of amazing stuff, here to discuss his thoughts on the politics, my thoughts on the politics, and we're just going to get right into it. Um, I've, I've got with us today, you guys, the one and only Mr. Alfonso Rachel, all the way coming from the deserts of California. Uh, Zoe and I go way back. Um, he's got a lot to say. You may have seen him on Fox. You may have seen him on Zoloft on the V3 TV network or on um, 20 Pound Sledge. He's, he's all over the place. So, Zoe, how are we doing today, sir? Man, we are doing well. We're doing fantastic. I mean, I, I heard you mention it's November. That's right, man. It's November. We're supposed to be thinking about Thanksgiving, man, and, and, and turkey. But instead, we're thinking more about these jive turkeys out there messing up the streets. And uh, But, I mean, you know, I'm still trying to keep it <laughs> positive and, and optimistic. But, man, a lot of nutbaggery out here right now. Yeah, I saw the uh, the uh, the 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 one ten or the one was it the one hundred one or the one ten freeway and the ten freeway was being blocked off by protesters out in California. They had the entire both sides of the freeway blocked off, much like when they do the uh, the Black Lives Matters protests. So, what do you think that these people think that they're going to accomplish by blocking off the freeway or even just going to the streets and protesting? Man, this is just catharsis. And, and I, I was, uh, you know, we had talked earlier man, and I was looking at this meme and it was funny. You know, these people are swearing up and down that Trump is going to destroy America. Meanwhile, they're the ones who are out there destroying America. You know, it's like, or, you know, how they talk about, uh, you know, they want jobs. It's like, man, you guys don't want a job. You guys are burning down the jobs. <laughs> you don't want no job. <laughs> you know, it's, you guys want things for free. You know, it's like, but I don't get it. You guys want things for free. You want a free education so you can supposedly make a lot more money. But you don't want to spend the money because you want everything for free. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, none of this stuff that they're doing is making sense. And as opposed to what it is that they think they're going to accomplish, you know, this isn't about some, this whole, uh, uh, these antics that they're doing, you know, and that's really what it is, man. It's, it's antics. It has, it's not based in any common sense. It's not based in any sort of redeeming value. This isn't about a better America for them. This is just, this is just catharsis. They have found, it's like, it's like just pressure, man. It's just boiled up. It ain't got nothing to do with Trump. These people were angry before Trump. These people were angry before Obama. Some of these people ain't even old enough to know what it is that they need to be angry about. But they've been fed. They've been inundated with so much anger from a previous generation. Issues that really don't even have much to do with them. But at the same time, none of these issues are really new. This is stuff that's been haunting us before Obama. They've been haunting us before uh, freaking they were haunting us before Kennedy, they were haunting us before Lincoln. They were haunting us before America was even founded. These are some of the same issues that have just passed on from generation to generation. And it's just, it's based in just, uh, um, in this desire to hang on to a grievance. You know, as the saying goes, man, this isn't about seeking the, uh, seeking the, 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 the resolution. This is just about validating yourself and thinking that it's important to hang on to a grievance and making other people miserable with you. Sorry I'm going off here, man, but that's that's what that's what we're looking at. So so why now all of a sudden do you think that it's it's become such a big deal? As you said that all these issues have already they've already they've existed for, for decades um, mm -hmm. and they've they've been there. Why all of a sudden now do you think that th these these individuals have been energized and activated in their their responding in the way they are. Well, once again, it's it's um, if I may, it's not even so much a, a, an all of a sudden. Um, this is we, we've had this before. Um, but I, I will say this, though, 
what's going on today is a it's a bastardization man it is it is a perversion of the kind of civil unrest that we had uh in the years past like say for instance in the in the civil rights area that was a a, 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 a protest and it wasn't even a belligerent protest on the part of the protesters it was who they were protesting who were the belligerents right and um but that kind of civil unrest that we had, or even the civil unrest that we had during the Civil War, those who were, you know, uh, uh, fighting back against uh, uh, a certain establishment, that had redeeming value. This has none. You know, this is a this is a, a warped, perverted version of uh, an exercise in, in protest. Number one, these people who claim to love the First Amendment so much, they don't understand that the First Amendment says peaceably assemble. And these guys have totally ignored that. They're out there protesting. They're just acting a freaking fool. This is this is a new kind of unrest in America. This the, I'll, you're right in that. This is new. This is a new. I mean, we've had our civil unrest in America, but this is new, and it has no redeeming value. So, what do you think is is um, you know, like I, I'm reading about. Um the electoral college because as you know hillary won the popular vote and uh donald trump won more electoral votes um and a lot of people are calling for the uh abolition of the electoral college do you think that this is just people that are just they're just they're whinging as they say over here in england and they're just complaining or do you think that there is some some basis to that whereas uh, because a lot of people that i'm that i'm reading online are saying as an individual or as an American that's there to vote, I don't feel that my vote is counting. So the, the, the vote should be based on the people and not on, you know, the electoral system. What are your thoughts on that? Because I know Bernie Sanders was beating Hillary in a lot of these states along along the election uh, path. And because of the way that the system was set up, he was losing. Be, but he was winning the popular vote. So do you think that this is maybe an antiquated um, uh, concept or is it just is it should it stay that way? Or do you think these people are just misguided or what are your thoughts on that? Um, OK, well, those many would probably frown on uh, <clears throat> us having an electoral college, but they need to understand that we're, we're not a democracy. See, they're thinking that the popular vote should decide who wins. Right. But this isn't a democracy. We're a republic. So. That when you get that in the, into the understanding, and as the saying goes, democracy is basically two wolves in a sheep voting on who's going to have who for dinner, <laughs> right? So, in, in a de- for here, we don't we don't we're, we're not a democracy. We have a democratic process on how we how we uh, vote things in, uh, voting representatives and, and whatnot. But but we're still a republic. And the thing is, if we voted according to the popular vote, we would have tyranny. See, this is the thing. This is this is how what you get when you have a democratic vote. What you, basically what is popular, right? We're talking about a popular vote. What is popular gets voted in, and you know what the most popular thing is? Selfishness. People will vote according to their own selfish interest. That is what we'll end up getting with the popular vote. We will eat each. We will cannibalize each other if we did that, right? So that now here's the thing. If we go like to the like you know the West Coast, man. If we go to the East Coast, you know, you kind of go to the outer you know rims of of of, uh, of the United States, where where there's lots of population. A lot of these populations are going to vote a certain way, and if we and the, and the checks and balances that we have for that is the electoral college. Because if we went by the popular votes of like the cities and counties and stuff like that, we would have only one form of government, and the people would absolutely lose their power. Because people are going to vote for representatives who will only appeal to their selfish interests. So we have the Electoral College that helps to balance that out to where you have, um, and forgive me because uh, uh, it's hard for me to kind of edify how the Electoral College works. I just know the redeeming value of it. So kind of for me to get from point A to point B to point C, you know, I'm going to flub that a little bit. But basically the Electoral College protects us from having uh, these high populated areas for coming in with their popular vote because if that's what we have there would only be one sway of voting and that's the way we would have it the electoral college balances that out that's actually how that's that's where most of uh that's pretty much where most of hillary's uh votes came from were the the main hubs 
uh, according to the maps that I've seen, mm -hmm. the main hubs across the United States. And, um, you know, based on the counties, it, it didn't look like she won much. But like you said, because of the number of people that were in, you know, New York City, L.A., et cetera, the, mm -hmm. the sheer volume would obviously play to her favor. Do you yes. think that it's time to maybe um, get rid of the, the two party system and maybe introduce something different? Um, no, because one, one of the things that people say is that, you know, we have two party corruption. So <laughs> I don't think having three party corruption is going to solve that. Um, the thing is, because like, say, for instance, if people want to go third party, if they're tired of the two party system and they want to go third party. Well, keep in mind, the Republican Party itself is a third party, you know, and if people aren't happy with the Republican Party now or, or how a third party became a second party, well, they're not going to be happy if we do it again. You know, and the thing is, you know, people have these ideals uh, that, you know, we're going to bring in another party. Well, when that third party comes to power and it becomes more popular, it is not immune to corruption. It's going to happen, too. And if I can, you know, and I'm, a, I'm a Republican voter. And it, it, the thing is, right now, people just say that the two party system is, is just basically a two headed monster. Hmm. And I agree. You have this two headed monster. Why? And, and who does this? And, but the thing is, it's a two headed monster. But which monster is it that they're really seeing? They're not seeing the monster of the Republican Party. The Republican Party is the party that stands closest with the Constitution. The, the Democrat Party, if you look at its platform, is fully antithetical to the Constitution. Proof of that is that the Democrats have always been so against the Constitution that when the Democrats went to form the Confederacy, they made their own Constitution. So all that stuff that when people talk about slavery and stuff like that, that's not the U.S. Constitution. That's the Confederate Constitution. So that's how I mean, when you when people want to look at this two headed monster, that is the real monster. And when Republicans start acting or when they just start letting or when they start laying down and letting the Democrats run roughshod over everything, that's when you're going to see that two headed monster. It's not because a Republican Party is a monster. It's because too many Republicans are deviant or too freaking lazy and they're acting like Democrats or letting the Democrats have too much in their way. So when we can recover the Republican Party and get the Republican Party back to what it was supposed to be founded on, that was closely reflective of the Constitution. Then we'll start to be we'll start to see these things get solved. But a third party, it's 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 just asking for a bigger mess. Hmm. With um, a lot of the things that I saw, and uh, obviously me being in in England, I don't get the same news that you do. Uh, to a, to an extent, I do. Obviously, I have access to all of the cable news outlets and so on. Um, as I see a lot of stuff online that you may or may not have seen, where a lot of these supporters of Trump. Uh, President-elect Trump, as we'll say now, um, are, are extremely vocal with their outward race, racism or, or racist views on things. Um, and, and I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I've read that he was endorsed by the KKK. Um, and, and you see, obviously, pollsters, you know, a T-shirt that say, make the, the White House white again, things like that. Does that not worry you as, um, as just a black American period, um, being in that environment on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, we got to take into account that a lot of that stuff is trolling, right? There are people in there. There's a lot of imposters out there who are trying to do stuff like that to make it look like, you know, this high population of KKK who has voted for Donald Trump. Uh, now, some of it may be authentic, but a lot of it is trolling. Um, I mean, that we know, we know, man, the propaganda machine in America here is, is big. And we know that the propaganda machine is driven by the left wing. And uh, you know, when we got uh, one of the biggest industries here, Hollywood, it's a, it's an industry of make-believe. And they're able to make things look a certain way. Um, now, once again, it doesn't take away from the fact that there probably are some authentic uh, uh, you know, white supremacists out there uh, who are doing this. Uh, or like, say, for instance, like David Duke, I think uh, and I don't justify this. I'm just saying, let's look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is David Duke. David Duke was in the KKK and a Democrat for the majority of his uh, of his of his uh, po political career. Um, he 
and as a last resort, he became a Republican. And if I if I can back up a little bit, you know, a lot of people like you know they want to tie this uh, this Democrat shift to Republican and, and call it like a party switch or something like that. None of this stuff makes any sense. You know, they'll try to bring up Barry Goldwater, and Barry Goldwater got all the the the, the white votes and all that sort of stuff, and, and uh, the 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 uh, the South and all their uh, you know racist ideals. And they want to play up Barry Goldwater like he's this big figure. Barry Goldwater lost, right? right? He lost, and he lost big. So, and it's the same thing now. They're trying to play up this small instance and try to make this the big picture. David Duke is a, a, a prime example of cherry picking. To look at David Duke while overlooking the morbid biggest bigoted history of the Democrat Party, over 150 years of bigotry of the Democrat Party, um, finding the K, uh, who founded the KKK, who instituted Jim Crow laws. Uh, they, they're, they're, they're responsible for the Dred Scott decision. They're the, responsible for the revocation of civil rights and voting rights. I mean, all these, all the, the morbid racism that has scarred America has always been the Democrat Party. But liberals want to zero in on David Duke. It's like, do, you, do they want to also overlook that Hillary Clinton was really good friends with Robert Byrd, who was a grand Cleagle and exalted Cyclops in the KKK? Bill Clinton read his eulogy you know, so, and, and made excuses for and justified him being in the KKK. So Donald Trump getting an endorsement from David Duke. And the thing is, a lot of these people who are trying to call themselves KKK and, and voting Republican, these people are just freaking confused. You know, KK, number one, Trump is pro-Israel. KKK hates Israel. But if you have these people who are voting for Trump, well, then that means they're going to have to forfeit their anti-Jew sentiment to vote for Trump. I don't know if KK, now the, the, the Dixiecrats said they would vote for a yellow dog before they would vote Republican, right? So it doesn't make sense that the KKK is going to vote in a pro-Jew president. That doesn't make sense. So a lot of this stuff, it doesn't really pass the smell test. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I know that um, that that has been a uh, a major topic in the news. At least that's the how how I see the news here. When we're you know obviously in Europe, we see it a little bit differently uh, when you're watching BBC and things of that nature. So um, so I hope you stay safe. Um, I don't you know want there to be any drama brought into your life as a result of this. I know uh, it seems like a lot of the things that he had been saying, he being uh, uh, Donald Trump during his his uh, campaign, had, uh, there were things that a lot of people were thinking and the things that a lot of people felt that needed to be done, you know, with monitoring of certain people that move in and out of the country, um, you know, the southern border being an issue that it is. Um, there's, it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff that needs to be dealt with, but we'll see how it gets dealt with. But I know that a lot of people are upset about a lot of, a lot of everything. It seems like back home. So I don't really know what all is going to take place, but hopefully, uh, good things. Cause you can't hope for the president to fail. We're, uh, we're all Americans in this and you all live in the same country. And if you know, he fails, everybody fails. You know, it's like I put, I put up something on Facebook that says, uh, something to the effect of hoping that he fails is like hoping that the pilot that you're riding in a plane crashes the plane. You know, you're all in that same plane together. Whether you like the guy or not is irrelevant. Um, I was, I, I'm was i seeing stuff like Michael Moore. He's trying to, he's talking about getting him impeached and he's, you know, people aren't going to rest until he's, you know, out of office and all this other stuff. He's apparently Donald Trump is up, um, uh, He's 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 up to go up in front of court for his uh, what is it Trump University? Apparently there was some issues uh, going on with that, and um, there there's there's all kinds of things that I'm reading that are that are are leading towards uh, uh, people wanting him out of the office before he's even been sworn into the office. So <laughs> it's it's really a bit crazy. I don't I don't I don't understand what's going on if you didn't want him to get get as far as he did then they shouldn't uh they should have been a, a bit more strong or unified i guess on their side of the political coin and they wouldn't have gotten to to this point where they're rioting in the streets and and holding up traffic and demonstrating and burning stuff down and things like that so um do you have any final thoughts on on regarding this um sure man and if i may trump was not my first pick uh <laughs> Uh, but 
I also, I understood what it was that he was doing. You know, Trump has been involved in, you know, things that are in popular culture, like with the reality TV shows. And Trump sold it. That was the thing. It's like, man, I, I, my whole thing's been trying to get Republicans to understand it because we're supposed to be the, the free market party and the party of commercialism and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, when are you going to start using that? You know, when are you going to start using that affinity for the free market? Well, Trump did. He knew how to make his way through the culture. He knew that some of the things that he was going to say was going to be inflammatory. He basically almost ran it like the Jerry Springer show. And the Jerry Springer show was pretty dang popular. So he, he brought that into his wheelhouse, right? Um, he didn't approach it like a politician. He approached it like an entertainment, as an entertainer. And entertainment is very popular in America. It's, well, it's popular pretty much anywhere. People like to be entertained. And that's what he did. Um, so I got to give him kudos for that. Do I like some of the things that he said? You know, no. Um, n- let me rephrase that. In terms of what he said, I can appreciate uh, the um, how his 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 approach to what we his his desire to want to solve things. Right? I can appreciate that in the manner in which he said it. It's like okay, that I can see where that rubbed people the wrong way. But I'm trying to look past that and see what is it that you're actually trying to get to, and what he's trying to get to does have more redeeming value. So it's like, you know, it's weighing that out in terms of, um, you know, people wanting him to fail. I can appreciate that, too. I don't agree with it, but I can appreciate it. Like, say, for instance, like, well, uh, liberals had a hissy fit, man, when, uh, when, when Rush Limbaugh said that he wanted uh, Obama to fail. Um, I agree. I wanted Obama to fail, too. Not because he's Obama. Not because of his name, not because of his skin color or anything like that. I wanted him to fail because his policies were just simply wrong. You do not want him to succeed because if he does succeed with these policies, America will fail. America will eat itself alive with his policies. If he succeeds, we're, 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 we're in crap. And we are, that's where we are right now. Right. We're, people are feeling the hurt from the policies that he's put in. Right. So, no, we didn't want him to succeed. Now, with with Trump, I get it. They don't want him to succeed. And the thing is, yes, we're all in this boat together. And the pilot, you know, I, 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 I appreciate your analogy about, you know, the pilot on the plane. It's like, look, you want to have the pilots back. But it depends on where the pilot is going. It's <laughs> like, hey, if the pilot wants to fly the plane into a volcano, you don't want to cheer him on. You know, you don't want to say, hey, hey, everybody be cool, man. The pilot knows what he's doing. Let him fly this plane into a volcano. No, you might want to stop him from doing that. So compromise, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who says we need to come together as Americans and we need to compromise. I don't think it's a good idea to compromise with bad ideas. It's like, look, if you want to drive us into a ditch, I'm not going to get in that car with you. And I'm going to try to put up roadblocks to keep the other passengers that you have your car on the road and safe. Yeah, of course, so, of course. You know I, I, mean? I think, I think. Uh, well, we would hope that the pilot wouldn't be trying to fly us right into a volcano. But um, I know the like what you said about the failed policies of, of President uh, Obama. With I mean, you guys are what is it? Uh, it's probably over nineteen trillion in debt right now. I, I know that's around the last time I checked. Um, you know, and the universal health care has been a tremendous failure, and I think that's probably going to be one of the first things that uh, gets dealt with because um, the Republicans won the House and the Senate. If I'm if I'm correct and hopefully we'll see if that actually means something because uh there was a time when republicans have a hot house in the senate and uh really dropped the ball man. yeah really <laughs> so. well the, the the democrats had the same issue i heard that all through the first two years of uh of president obama's uh presidency well you know he can't get anything done because you know this the senate or the house yada yada i'm like well the first two years of his presidency it was a democratic house and senate so uh, there, mm-hmm. there should have been no problems getting anything passed during that time frame. So, but that obviously wasn't quite the case. So, um, thanks for calling in, man. It was it was great catching up with you. I uh, always enjoy hearing what you have to say on things. Um, where where are you uh, going to be next? Where can people catch up with you? What's going on with you? Well, uh, still working on trying to finish up uh, the next uh, Twenty Pound Sledge album. Uh, still doing the Zoloft. Uh, <laughs> There's a, that, there's a, I, I, just really quick, you, it's like YouTube doesn't like my name, the Zoloft. It's like it's two separate words. It's not the medication. It's two separate words. They can't trademark Zo and Loft, you know. But anyway, right. uh, so they're giving me a hard time about that. But hopefully, people will catch up with those on my website, alfonsorachel.com. And uh, we still got the Gosnell movie coming out. 
uh, hopefully that'll be out uh, at least as early as spring of uh, 2017. So brilliant, brilliant. Alfonso, Rachel, you guys, hit him up on his websites, follow his stuff. You can see him on his website. He's also on V3TV. If you can't catch him there, he's all over the place. Thanks for calling in today, brother, and stay safe and stay cool. It's not uh, it's not too hot out there in the desert, I hope. <laughs> and, um, During this time of the year, it's not too bad. <laughs> it's not too bad. Right on. Brilliant. Um, thanks for calling in, and we'll speak to you again soon. Uh, the, the, the resolution, this is just about validating yourself and thinking that it's important to hang on to a grievance and making other people miserable with you. Sorry I'm going off here, man, but that's that's what that's what we're looking at. So so why now all of a sudden do you think that it's it's become such a big deal? As you said that all these issues have already they've already they've existed for, for decades um, mm -hmm. and they've they've been there. Why all of a sudden now do you think that th these these individuals have been energized and activated in their their responding in the way they are well once again it's it's um if i may it's not even so much a uh, an all of a sudden um this is we, we've had this before um but i i will say this though what's going on today is a it's a bastardization man it is it is a perversion of the kind of civil unrest that we had uh, in the years past, like say for instance in the in the civil rights area, that was a a, a a protest, and it wasn't even a belligerent protest on the part of the protesters. It was who they were protesting who were the belligerents, right? And um, but that kind of civil unrest that we had, or even the civil unrest that we had during the Civil War, those who were you know uh, uh, fighting back against uh, uh, a certain establishment, that had redeeming value. This has none. You know, this is a this is a, a, a warped, perverted version of uh, an exercise in, in protest. Number one, these people who claim to love the First Amendment so much, they don't understand that the First Amendment says peaceably assemble. And these guys have totally ignored that. They're out there protesting. They're just acting a freaking fool. 
this is this is a new kind of unrest in America. This the, I'll, you're right in that this is new. This is a new. I mean, we've had our civil unrest in America, but this is new and it has no redeeming value. So, what do you think is is um, you know, like I, I've, I'm reading about. Um, the electoral college because as you know hillary won the popular vote and uh donald trump won more electoral votes um and a lot of people are calling for the uh abolition of the electoral college do you think that this is just people that are just they're just they're whinging as they say over here in england and they're just complaining or do you think that there is some some basis to that whereas because a lot of people that i'm that i'm reading online are saying as an individual or as an American that's there to vote, I don't feel that my vote is counting. So the, the, the vote should be based on the people and not on, you know, the electoral system. What are your thoughts on that? Because I know Bernie Sanders was beating Hillary in a lot of these states along, along the election uh, path. And because of the way that the system was set up, he was losing but he was winning the popular vote. So do you think that this is maybe an antiquated um, uh, concept or is it just, is it, should it stay that way? Or do you think these people are just misguided or what are your thoughts on that? Um, okay. Well, those many would probably frown on uh, <clears throat> us having an electoral college, but they need to understand that we're, we're not a democracy. See, they're thinking that the popular vote should decide who wins, right. but this isn't a democracy. We're a Republic. So, that when you get that in the, into the understanding, and as the saying goes, democracy is basically two wolves in a sheep voting on who's going to have who for dinner, <laughs> right? So, in, in a, for here, we don't, we don't, we're, we're not a democracy. We have a democratic process on how we how we uh, vote things in, uh, voting representatives and, and whatnot. But but we're still a republic. And the thing is, if we voted according to the popular vote, we would have tyranny. See, this is the thing. This is this is how what you get when you have a democratic vote. What you, basically what is popular, right? We're talking about a popular vote. What is popular gets voted in, and you know what the most popular thing is? Selfishness. People. Joseph show you know who it is it's your host Von Joseph you guys it's November it's November we've been away for a while we are back on the attack we have to be because unless you've been living under a rock you know that the political elections in the United States have just come to a conclusion and you know what happened Donald Trump beat the dynasty candidate in Hillary Rodham Clinton well, what do you know about that? Nobody saw that coming. I know. I didn't see it coming. Did you see it coming? I know you didn't see it coming. No one saw that stuff coming. Wow. So we got a special guest for you guys today. Here to discuss all kinds of amazing stuff. Here to discuss his thoughts on the politics. My thoughts on the politics. And we're just going to get right into it. Um, I've, I've got with us today, you guys, the one and only Mr. Alfonso Rachel. All the way coming from the deserts of California. Uh, Zoe and I go way back. Um, he's got a lot to say. You may have seen him on Fox. You may have seen him on Zoloft on the V3 TV network or on um, 20 Pound Sledge. He's, he's all over the place. So, Zoe, how are we doing today, sir? Man, we are doing well. We're doing fantastic. I mean, I, I heard you mention it's November. That's right, man. It's November. We're supposed to be thinking about Thanksgiving, man, and, and, and turkey. But instead, we're thinking more about these jive turkeys out there messing up the streets. And uh, But, I mean, you know, I'm still trying to keep it <laughs> positive and, and optimistic. But, man, a lot of nutbaggery out here right now. Yeah, I saw the uh, the, uh, the 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 one ten or the one was it the one hundred one or the one ten freeway and the ten freeway was being blocked off by protesters out in California. They had the entire both sides of the freeway blocked off, much like when they do the uh, the Black Lives Matters protests. People will vote according to their own selfish interest. That is what we'll end up getting with the popular vote. We will eat each. We will cannibalize each other if we did that, right? So that now here's the thing. If we go like to the like, you know, the West Coast, man, if we go to the East Coast, you know, you kind of go to the outer, you know, rims of, 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 uh, of the United States where, where there's lots of population. 
a lot of these populations are going to vote a certain way. And if we and the, and the checks and balances that we have for that is the electoral college, because if we went by the popular votes of like the cities and counties and stuff like that. We would have only one form of government and the people would absolutely lose their power hmm. because people are going to vote for representatives who will only appeal to their selfish interests. So we have the electoral college that helps to balance that out to where you have. Um, and forgive me, because uh, uh, it's hard for me to kind of edify how the electoral college works. I just know the redeeming value of it. So kind of for me to get from point A to point B to point C, you know, I'm going to flub that a little bit. But basically, the Electoral College protects us from having uh, these high populated areas for coming in with their popular vote, because if that's what we have, there would only be one sway of voting. And that's the way we would have it. The Electoral College balances that out. That's actually how that's that's where most of uh, that's pretty much where most of Hillary's uh, votes came from, where the the main hubs, uh, according to the maps that I've seen, mm -hmm. the main hubs across the United States. And, um, you know, based on the counties, it, it didn't look like she won much. But like you said, because of the number of people that were in you know, New York City, L.A., et cetera, the, mm -hmm. the sheer volume would obviously play to her favor. Do you yes. think that it's time to maybe um, get rid of the, the two-party system and maybe introduce something different? Um, no, because what, one of the things that people say is that, you know, we have two-party corruption. So <laughs> I don't think having three-party corruption is going to solve that. Um, the thing is, so what do you think that these people think that they're going to accomplish by blocking off the freeway or even just going to the streets and protesting? Man, this is just catharsis. And, and I, I was, uh, you know, we had talked earlier man, and I was looking at this meme and it was funny. You know, these people are swearing up and down that Trump is going to destroy America. Meanwhile, they're the ones who are out there destroying America. You know, it's like, or, you know, how they talk about, uh, you know, they want jobs. It's like, man, you guys don't want a job. You guys are burning down the jobs. <laughs> you don't want no job. <laughs> you know, it's, you guys want things for free. You know, it's like, but I don't get it. You guys want things for free. You want a free education so you can supposedly make a lot more money. But you don't want to spend the money because you want everything for free. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, none of this stuff that they're doing is making sense. And as opposed to what it is that they think they're going to accomplish, you know, this isn't about some this whole uh, uh, these antics that they're doing, you know, and that's really what it is, man. It's it's antics. It has it's not based in any common sense. It's not based in any sort of redeeming value. This isn't about a better America for them. This is just this is just catharsis. They have found it's like it's like just pressure, man. It's just boiled up. It ain't got nothing to do with Trump. These people were angry before Trump. These people were angry before Obama. Some of these people ain't even old enough to know what it is that they need to be angry about. But they've been fed. They've been inundated with so much anger from a previous generation. Issues that really don't even have much to do with them. But at the same time, none of these issues are really new. This is stuff that's been haunting us before Obama. They've been haunting us before uh, freaking they were haunting us before Kennedy, they were haunting us before Lincoln. They were haunting us before America was even founded. These are some of the same issues that have just passed on from generation to generation. And it's just, it's based in just, uh, um, in this desire to hang on to a grievance. You know, as the saying goes, man, this isn't about seeking the, uh, seeking the,